Hello, today we will discuss how to use interrupt in Texas TMS 320F 28379D and uh, we will use its interrupt from enhanced PWM modulator block. We will configure a GPIO as an output. In addition, we will use this GPIO and toggle its output in each interrupt and then we will see how to change the period of the interrupt. So we will do these things in this exercise. So before we proceed further, we should know what is the pin map of the control card. To find the pin map of the control card, we will open the Code Composer Studio. When the Code Composer Studio is open, click on View, click on Getting Started. You will see this screen. Go to Resource Explorer. In this, go to Development Tools, Kits and Boards. Under Development Tools, go to Docking Station underscore HSEC underscore 120 or 180 pin. Click on this. Then you will see uh, three folders R4 underscore 1, R5 underscore 0. Explore directory. Go to R4 underscore 1 and then click on pinout table and check whether you see 180 pins at the very last entry of this PDF file. You can save this file. I have already saved this file in my computer. And here, if you see, you can see PWM 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. They are available on pin number 49, 51, 53, 55, and so on. We will use PWM 1A to see the uh, pulse width of the output. In addition, we will configure GPIO 8 as an output. From this PDF file, it seems that each pin has only one peripheral function. For example, pin 49 can be used only for PWM 1A. Pin 51 can only be used for PWM 1B. But that is not the case. Actually, each pin has up to 12 different peripheral functions that are multiplexed. So to find the details of each pin, and what are the signals that are multiplexed in it? We have to see the user manual of this DSP. To find the user manual of the DSP, you can go to Resource Explorer, type 28379D and select the device. Now here you can see device documentation, development kit, and software related to only 28379D DSP. In this, click on Technical Reference Manual. So you will see this PDF file. You can save this file in your computer as well. If you want to know in detail about general purpose input output, you should refer this chapter. Here in section 8.7, you can see GPIO and peripheral maxing. Click on this. Here in this table, you can see that each GPIO pin has several peripheral functions which are multiplexed. For example, GPIO 0 can be configured as EPWM1A or STAA. GPIO 1 can be configured as EPWM1B, MF, SRB, IO, SCLA, IOD, and so on. We will use GPIO 0 as EPWM1A and GPIO 8, we will configure it as an output pin and toggle its output. So we will see these two things in this exercise. Now let us go to the software. Under this, go to C2000 layers, English, the 
examples. Two eight three seven is D. CPU one. Go to EPW underscore EX two underscore up down underscore AQ. This one. And click on download and install. Click yes. Now it is successfully downloaded. Now you can click on import to IDE. Now you can see the example file in the project explorer. You can close this getting started and resource explorer. And then now we can review what is in this EPWM underscore ex2 underscore up down example file. In this file, you will see that EPWM1, EPWM2, and EPWM3 they are initialized and their interrupts are also enabled here. Now, if you remember the pinout diagram, PWM1A is at pin number 49. Okay, so what we will do, we will run this code and see what kind of waveform we are seeing at pin number 49. So we click on this debug button select cpu1 only click ok now the program is ready to run okay so i have connected the oscilloscope probe on pin number 49 i am using pico scope 6 from pico technology so i can see the waveform on the desktop so channel 1 is connected to pwm pin and now I will run the code. Now you can see that the EWM pulse width is changing. Here I can change the time division to 20 microseconds. Now I will go back to the code again and we will review the code now. And if you go through this code you will see some parameters are defined like epwm1 underscore time one underscore tbprd epwm1 underscore max underscore cmpa and so on if you want to know more in detail about how this epwm module works you can again go back and refer to the reference manual you can see the chapter on EPWM that is number 15 and go to page number 1874. Here you will see time based frequency and period. So here it shows three types of EWM. One is up count, another is down count and third is up and down count. So in this uh, PWM module, we are using up down count. And for this to work, we should specify the maximum count that is specified by this timer TVPRD. So here they have used 2000. If we change that number, the time it takes to reach that number and come down to zero will change and our frequency will change. If you see the initialization code of this file, you will see that they are using the interrupts of PWM1, PWM2, and PWM3. If you want to use PWM for interrupt 1 only, we will disable interrupt for PWM2 and PWM3. Now let us go to the initialize EPWM1 function where they have initialized this epwm1 block this is the function 
if you go down in this you will see that it is generating interrupt on third event what is the event event when counter goes to zero but we want every time the counter goes to zero we want to generate the interrupt so we change this epwm1 base 3u to 1u and save this so now every time the counter goes to zero there will be an interrupt generated after this we would like to initialize the general purpose input output pin pin number 8 as the output pin for that we will go to initialization part of the code where they are initializing the gpio 0 1 2 3 and 4 5 as epwm 1a 1b 2a 2b and so on now here we will first set the pad configuration for gpio 8 so we will so we will write gpio underscore set pad comma gpio underscore pin underscore type underscore pull up then we will write on Then we will output one on this pin. After this, we will set the pin configuration to GPIO. Then we will set the direction mode as the output. If you want to know more in detail about this function, you can go to include, then the first folder, and then you will see several .c and .h file. Here you will, here you can click on gpio.h. This is the header file for GPIO driver, where they are defining several types of functions and then you can go to gpio.c where they are writing the code for these functions so here you can see gpio underscore set direction mode this takes two parameters as its input first is the pin number another one is gpio direction whether you want it as an input or output so we have used this function and used 8 that is the gpio pin and direction mode out which is the output and this gpio dir underscore mode underscore out that is also defined in this header file you can see it here Similarly, you can find the details of all these four functions what I have written. Now you may also wonder how to know the sequence of this initialization. Again, for this, we will refer to our technical reference manual. Go to chapter number eight, section 8.2. And here you can see the input output pin configuration systems. I would recommend you to configure another GPIO pin as an output and see whether you can output some data through it. So now we have configured GPIO 8 as an output. 
Now we would like to toggle its output. So we will go to the interrupt subroutine of EPWM1. And just after entering the interrupt service routine, we will write the code to toggle the GPIO. For that, for that you can go to GPIO.h file, search for toggle. You will see this function GPIO underscore toggle pin. So we will use this function. Place it here. Specify the number of pin and semicolon. Save this file. Debug it. Now there is an error. Now I got an error here because instead of a small i, I have used capital I. So you should go for small i. Again, debug. Now we are ready to run the code, but where to connect the probe? So we have configured GPIO 8 as the output pin. So let us see what pin number we are using. So again, we will go to this GPIO section, peripheral maxing, and you will see GPIO 8 is EPWM15A. That is the first peripheral function in this table, EPWM5A. Then we will open the pinout file. Where is the PWM5A? You will see that is on pin 57. So you connect oscilloscope probe on pin number 57. I have already done that. And that is connected to channel B. I switch off channel A. And let us run the code now. You can see the square wave. And the frequency is 12.5 kilohertz. If you want to change the frequency of this signal, what we can do? We can change this TV PRD. Let us say we take 2500. Fill the code. and run. Now you can see the frequency is changed to 10 kilohertz. To see what is happening to EPWM1A signal, let us turn on the channel A. We can stop the scope to see the waveforms. Here you can see the frequency of channel A is double the frequency of channel B. And the duty cycle of channel A is varying. Now you can play with this code and vary the duty cycle of PWM, change the frequency of the PWM signal. Instead of toggling the GPIO output 1 and 0, and so on. Thank you.